AM radio, an op-ed column, and Fox News is not enough. I want a center-right nation to fight for its soul, and its soul is represented in the arts. Its soul is represented in, in a world in which media is everything. AM radio is the lowest form of communication. It's tinny. It's not robust. It's not avatar. I want avatar. I want the right to enter the world of media to the extent and invest in media the way that the left does. The fake media is trying to silence us, but we will not let them because the people know the truth. The fake media tried to stop us from going to the White House, but I'm president and they're not. You're listening to the Kurt Schilling Podcast, a Breitbart.com podcast. The podcast starts now. Here's Kurt with today's headlines. Welcome to another edition of the Kurt Schilling Podcast. Got a great show lined up for you guys today. Author of Clinton Cash, as well as many other books, also the president of the uh, Government Accountability Institute. Peter Schweitzer is going to join us. Uh, and then John Nolte from Breitbart is going to talk to us. And, and we're going to continue to discuss the uh, the dementia suffered in Hollywood, the moral compass of the left. Uh, but we're going to start off by, uh, well, well, my favorite part of the show almost every day is uh, catching up with the sound bites that make the world go round. Wanting to figure out who and what these people really are the, the news stories don't do these people justice in, in good and bad ways. And the first one is uh, Lanny Davis. If you don't know who he is, he's Michael Cohen's lawyer. He's also a Clinton <clears throat> confidant. He was on Megyn Kelly today, which, by the way, I forgot she even had a show. Uh, but I want you to listen to what he requests. He, he talks about this, but listen to the end of the interview and listen to the request he has to make in the response. Is Michael Cohen prepared to testify before Congress on this issue or before a grand jury on everything he knows. Michael Cohen has committed to telling the truth to whoever wants him to tell the truth. Beyond that, I'll have to leave that to Mr. Petrillo, his criminal uh, defense lawyer. But could I just take one opportunity to remind everyone that Michael Cohen has suffered a tragic and difficult experience with his family. He's without resources, and we've set up a website called MichaelCohenTruth.com that we're hoping that he will get some help from the American people so he can continue to tell the truth. The, the audience, is not, they don't know if you're ready to donate, Lanny, but I, we did check before we went to air. It's got $70,000 in it so far. And listen, we appreciate you coming on. I, w I would say the reaction of your audience may be that they're not as interested in getting the truth out about Donald Trump as uh, many other people in the country. Approximately 60% of the country would not have the reaction of your audience. Okay. By the way, it's I, was, I overstated. It's twenty thousand. It's not seventy thousand. But you know, for Cohen's hope, hope springs a journal, I guess. The left is now turning to GoFundMe because we've already seen uh, how uh, how it's doing for other people, uh, including Peter Strzok. But the audience's reaction, and it's funny because apparently they put a poll out in 28 minutes. They got a result back and found that 60 percent of the American people are all about Michael Cohen, which I. I guarantee it's not even close to it's closer to six than 60. But then when we actually have true real legal minds and people talking about the legalities of what's happening and we get to the realities of what it is, you realize that the, the left is just filling the room with white noise to uh, to avoid the truth. Listen to Alan Dershowitz, law, Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz, who has one of the been one of the salient uh, and cognizant people through all this. Listen to him talk about uh, what, what, what's happening and how, how this looks legally. He's more correct than his critics are. It's a close question. It's complicated. The law is clear that a president may contribute to his own campaign. So if the president had paid $280,000 to these two women, even if he had done so, in order to help his campaign, that would be no problem. That's legal. Uh, and if Cohen himself made the contribution, that would be unlawful because he has a limit of $5,200. So the complicated issue is, what if Trump told him to do it, as Cohen says, then Cohen would be acting for Trump as Trump's representative, and the campaign contribution would be lawful as long as the president ultimately 
paid for it, if it was just an advance on what he was going to pay, that would be completely lawful. So the prosecutor is a little bit in a catch-22. If he believes Cohen that the president directed him to do it, then it's not a crime at all. If he doesn't believe Cohen, then Cohen has committed a crime, but not the president. And the legal pundits who are saying that if Cohen admits to a crime, that makes Trump an unindicted co-conspirator are just wrong as a matter of basic criminal law. You don't become an unindicted co-conspirator if your action is lawful, even though the action of the other person is unlawful. That's all to say that basically what everybody was saying yesterday, which was he committed no crime. Even if, if, if Cohen is telling the truth, which is an enormous stretch given what we know about this, this guy. It was clear that it wasn't a, a crime committed by the president. Let's go on, and I, I don't know. I, I apologize for uh, for continuing to play uh, sound bites of this person because she's irrelevant. But she, she does say things that you know the left's thinking. Uh, listen to Mika Brzezinski, who has about as much qualification uh, as a news person as I do as a marathon runner. Listen to her on MSNBC's Morning Joe yesterday. Listen up. He doesn't follow anyone's advice, especially lawmakers on Capitol Hill. I mean, I, you know, he even said on this show during the campaign, his best advisor, his top advisor, the person he listens to, Donnie Deutsch, more than anybody in the whole world is himself. And uh, so I wonder what Trump is telling himself right now, Donnie. And I, I go to you because uh, I know that. Trump very well, longer than Joe and yeah. I have known him. We've known him for about a decade. And uh, a lot of his behavior seems to, which was present during the campaign, present during the time that we know him, knew him before he ran for president, but didn't seem really that applicable to anything that was important. But it has devolved. And the question is, yeah. is he taking anybody's advice now? Because I would probably think that he's spinning and will probably do something in the foreign policy realm that's a little risky about right now. I'm concerned about a deflection. I got to tell you, at the heart of every, I think, true successful person is your gut is your your best guide, your best teacher. Take advice, and, and, and that's the thing is, you know Mika hasn't been paying attention to anything. If you listen to people during the, uh, during the, the campaign, the primary, and then the general, uh, one of the things that, everybody that was around him said was the guy asks brilliant questions and sometimes intelligence is measured by the questions you ask instead of the questions you answer and uh i've known him since 2006 and uh that's the guy i know he's a smart dude and and he doesn't come across sometimes i know he says things and does things and his public image is 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 uh i think vastly different he's a very respectful very kind nice guy who's smarter than people want to believe he is anyway that's that's mika and and i just wanted to make sure you understood that they're, where they're coming from but the sound bite of the day and the reason she will be one of uh she will be the loser of the day is uh one thing two words that i hear continually uh with the left and i i you know i think maybe we're overdoing it until i hear people like this talk elizabeth warren yesterday said when they were talking about molly tibbetts uh she was on uh, CNN, and they were talking about the Molly Tibbetts death. I want you to listen to what she says and her answer to Molly's parents and what's going on. I just please just listen to this quote and realize this is a woman who's been elected and is held as, and is revered in the left. Listen to what she says. Very important story in the news. It has to do with Molly Tibbetts, the young woman in Iowa who was murdered. Her body believed to be found yesterday. A person has been charged with that this person is an undocumented immigrant. Um, Mike Pence and the president have suggested the immigration laws need to be stronger so that people like this man who was accused of this murder were not in the country. Your reaction? You know, my, I'm so sorry for the family here, and I know this is hard, not only for the family, but for the people in her community, the people throughout Iowa. Um, but. One of the things we have to remember is we need an immigration system that is effective, that focuses on where real problems are. Uh, last month, I went down to the border and I saw where children had been taken away from their mothers. I met with those mothers who had been lied to, who didn't know where their children were, who hadn't had a chance to talk to their children. And there was no plan for how they would be reunified with their children. I think we need immigration laws 
that focus on people who pose a real threat. Mm -hmm. And I don't think mamas and babies are the place that we should be spending our resources. Separating a mama from mm -hmm. a baby does not make this country safer. We need immigration laws that focus on people who pose a real threat. I would argue that a murdering illegal immigrant is a real threat. And that's where our, our, we, we focus on this, this stuff. The, 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 her pivot to uh, illegal immigration off of the murder of a young girl who will never be reunited with her mama um, or her father or her family. A murder that was 100% preventable, right along with Kate Steinle and all the other things and murders we're seeing. There's actually another, uh, if you look at Breitbart today, take a listen to, there's another case of a, a, a multiple, multiple time deported illegal who is convicted of an, or, or uh, accused of a murder of a, another young lady. Anyway, I want you to listen to Lawrence Jones talk about well, his reaction to what she said. She's so tone deaf. I, I mean, this is what the American people is so frustrated with. It seems like people on the left are so focused on the legals, but they're not focused on the American citizens that are often harmed by people that shouldn't be in this country, that came in this country illegally. Uh, this is why I see them not being able to do well in the midterms, because every single time they have the opportunity to say, hey, I'm an American, I'm upset too. They say, oh no, uh, this, this, this president against the legals, we don't want to enrage people mm -hmm. against uh, getting a uh, comprehensive immigration reform. Well, I mean, they, they keep sliding back to the family separation, which was, I think, a low point for the president and something that they wish they could probably take back. But, you know, th th their tone keeps sounding more and more like they just want open borders. They want people, if you want to come here, just come here. And when you put that to the people in yeah. polling, that's not a very popular idea. Right. I think they're stepping on themselves. It's not that they sound like they want open borders. They have made it very clear that they want open borders. They don't respect the law. They want ICE eliminated. Um, they want us to cry about the kids at the border. But remember, there are a lot of crimes in America where kids are stripped away from their parents all day, right. every day, and they have to pay the consequences, like the war on drugs, which Democrats uh, supported back in the day. Black people were support, uh, ripped away from their family back in the day because of the war on drugs. But guess what? If you want the drug laws to change, then you got to go through the criminal justice yeah. reform process. Mm -hmm. It's the same for immigration. There's not this special privilege uh, for, for getting immigration done. They got to go through the legal process. And if Congress doesn't like the law, if they want to uh, uh, have a better system, then just change the law and get a, a bill to the president's desk. It's that simple. Well, it really isn't. Right. But no. it's, it's, come on. <laughs> Nothing but simple hey, at all. Yeah, yeah. No. Easy to sum up uh, from the perspective of a black man, too. But apparently he's going to be an Uncle Tom and a sellout because he's a black man with an, with an idea and intelligence and a conservative opinion. If you follow Candace Owens on Twitter, check out one of the tweets she posted up today about Clarence Thomas. Uh, it's a fantastic, uh, from Turning Point USA, it's a fantastic look back at who the left is. Anyway, uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be back. Peter Schweitzer, author of Flint and Cash, joins us in just a minute. Breitbart News Daily with Alex Marlowe. Why did we see some of the Republican kissing of Mark Zuckerberg that was taking place. I called it kissing the ring because I felt like every single person practically had to kiss the ring of this guy, you know, who wants to do nothing except get all those people out of office. So, you know, bizarre, bizarre behavior from the Republicans. Breitbart News Daily, weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Patriot 125. You're listening to the Kurt Schilling Podcast. Once again, here's Kurt Schilling. Joining me now is uh, uh, someone who I've become a huge fan of. He's the president of the Government Accountability Institute. He is author of Clinton Cash and a bunch of other uh, incredibly good novels. He's one of the few, I would argue that, that this is the, the, the male counterpart to Michelle Malkin, one of the few investigative journalists tr left in the world who's actually still doing his job. He is Peter Schweitzer. Good morning, Peter. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm great. How are you doing, Kurt? I'm good. I was just saying, I think if we allowed uh, a, a C-SPAN-like channel to just air Elizabeth Warren and Ale Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's quotes, we would, we would, there would be a red wave in the midterms. <laughs> 
Well, you know, it's funny, Kurt. There, there's a real tone deafness uh, on a lot of these issues, and um, I think what infuriates people is, uh, you know, the lack of consistency that they want to have different standards for uh, different people. Um, and you know, to just give you a, a, a current example, ripped from, rip from the headlines, uh, you know, you have the issue of uh, the, the payments that Michael Cohen made. Um, uh, you know, for uh, uh, apparently be on behalf of Donald Trump as it related to these uh, to these two women, uh, and the argument is that this is uh, amounts to an illegal campaign contribution. Um, okay, well, let's follow that logically to where it goes. Recall last year, Kurt, that came out that Congress had a taxpayer payer funded slush fund in which members of Congress who were charged with sexual harassment um, would make payments in exchange for non-disclosure agreements, and this was taxpayer money. So if, if you're going to argue that the Michael Cohen pay in payments were campaign contributions, illegal campaign contributions, you have all these members of Congress who've been using government taxpayer money uh, in a way that um, amounted to illegal campaign contributions. Um, and, of course, nobody wants to go there because consistency is not something that anybody is interested in. And that's kind of where we are today. Here's the thing. I have Son uh, Sonny Johnson on often. And one of the things Sonny has told me, and I find us guilty of it all the time, is they end up allowing – the left ends up framing the conversation. The conversation – uh, around Michael Cohen's payment, first of all, is in a place where it, it shouldn't be because if if you if you stick to the facts, I just uh, had a soundbite from Alan Dershowitz saying basically, no crime was committed here. There, there there's it, it, right. it just wasn't. You're as a as a private citizen, you're allowed to contribute to your own presidential campaign. Uh, that's not a misuse of campaign funds. If he instructed Michael Cohen to pay him and he would reimburse him, there's no crime, not none. But the left is acting as if. Uh, the president shot somebody in the Oval Office. I mean, they're, they're acting as if this is, oh, my God, he's impeached. And the, we're getting away from a conversation. The, what, the topic you just brought up, the, the slush fund, that we're even yeah. talking about that as anything other than a potential crime is a joke. Right. Taxpayer, oh, $17 million to protect the lives of some of the scummiest, most corrupt human beings on the planet. From, from from the very thing that Hollywood is is reeling from now. I mean, every day. I mean, there's a there's an article today out about Kevin Spacey, whose new movie, by the way, made 126 dollars on opening day. Which right. is one of the <laughs> that is one of the greatest things I've ever heard, by the way. But he's now under yeah. investigation for a sexual assault in 2016. The left, and I argue this, Peter, and and, and you can read it in your book. I read it in uh, um, uh, a couple other new books that are out. The left is is every single thing they purport to hate is exactly who and what they are. Yeah, there's 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 a massive inconsistency, and I think that you know, you, you know, I know people that that love Trump. I know people that don't like Trump, but I think a lot of the uh, uh, people that are uh, you know are hell bent on basically impeaching Trump. Um, are are going so far afield uh, that they're uh, they're ultimately damaging their own cause because there's a complete lack of consistency in what they're arguing for um, and and I think the American people are attuned to it. Part of it is that uh, we have social media, so people share information and ideas. Part of it is you have alternative media venues like your show, like talk radio, like uh, Breitbart News, and others. Um, and and so the, the the sort of way in which they try to frame something. Um, no longer really works because they don't control the narrative. Um, and, you know, my view on this stuff, Kurt, has always been, look, th there are flawed human beings on both sides of the aisle. We recognize that's human nature. Uh, but, but the fact that they are trying to create a sense that Trump is some kind of anomaly that's, you know, so far out there in terms of what he's done compared to other people in public life is, is honestly just laughable. Um, and, and I think that's where the conversation, um, you know, needs to be held um, and needs to be framed and the discussion needs to be done. I use a personal example, Peter, uh, that, that I've dealt with in, in trying to explain how this is all happening. And the fact of the matter is I, the mainstream media is somehow 
portrayed me as a racist. I've never said anything racist in my life. Uh, I, right. I, I, I would never purport to say anything racist. I don't have a right. skeleton. There's not going to be somebody. But the fact of the matter is, it, 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 when I get into a conversation or when I see a Twitter conversation about somebody saying, oh, my God, that guy's a racist, as if they just dismiss off the cuff, the left has made it. So if I were to ask, if I were to be on CNN and I were to say to Jake Tapper, Jake, tell me whose life is worse off 18 months uh, than it was 18 months ago, it would be one of those, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Everybody's life is worse without an actual answer. Without, one right. the, it's one of the things, Clinton Cash, I want to talk about that real quick. One of the things that your book did was much like, um, oh, the, the I, I'm sorry, I forgot his name, the lawyer, uh, the legal uh, expert on Fox that just wrote the book. Um, Greg Jarrett. Greg Jarrett. Yes, Greg Jarrett. One of the things that you both have done in your books is laid out factual data. Much like Ann Coulter does when she writes an article, she backs it up with facts and evidence. And, and, and so her point, whether you like her point or not, I always say this, facts are, are things that are true and real. You can like them or not like them, but it doesn't change the fact that they are facts. And, right. and the fact of the matter is this country is in a better place. The middle class is in a far better place than it was 18 months ago. There's more jobs, less unemployed, record numbers of employed people. Uh, all of the, There's still things that are wrong, still things that need to be fixed. But the fact of the matter is the left would have you believe we're in the midst of a self-implosion. And, <laughs> and there's, no, there's no fact to back that up other than their lunacy. Well, yeah, and I think you bring up a great point, Kurt. That's exactly right. I, I, I agree with you. I think that, that, that facts are the key. Um, and so as it relates to Clinton Cash, um, you know, they have not disputed the fact uh, of the money the, the Clintons received, when they received money, who they received it from, and decisions that she made as Secretary of State. Those they haven't refuted. The, the, the discussion and the debate is about what does it all mean. And, and fine, let's have that conversation. Uh, the left's argument has essentially been that this is all a coincidence. The fact that they got paid, you know, 145 million dollars from the shareholders in Uranium One, uh, and she supported the Uranium One deal. That's just coincidence. The fact that you had numerous other instances where people paid the Clinton Foundation money or paid Bill Clinton money, and she took favorable action, it's all coincidence. Well, let's have that debate and that discussion, but nobody is disputing the fact that they took the money. Um, and I think that it, as it relates to uh, Donald Trump, uh, you have the same conversation. You know, People knew when Donald Trump ran for president uh, and was elected president, uh, they knew that there had been rumors of dalliances in the past. They knew there had been rumors about, you know, business deals and whatever, and they made uh, their vote. Uh, and now that we have, uh, you know, Trump as president uh, and the economy is doing well, uh, rather than acknowledging the facts that, okay, the economy is doing well, it's lifted people um, in, in the working class up, uh, wages are rising, they're getting more hours of work, the quality of life has improved, rather than acknowledging that fact and having a broad conversation they just want to kind of deny the reality and and you know make excuses i think it was you know elizabeth warren that said you know unemployment rate is down because people have multiple part-time jobs which <laughs> which makes absolutely no sense so you know this is where we are uh and i think what's going to be interesting uh, you know going forward in the midterm elections and going forward in 2020 is um you know the clear commitment that a core of voters have to donald trump uh the clear commitment uh, uh, that a core of voters have in not liking Donald Trump. And then you've got people in the middle. And I think the people in the middle are going to make their decision based on where their life is and how they feel their life is uh, at the time. And I, you know, right now, uh, given where the economy is, I would say that augurs pretty well for Donald Trump. It's just like the, the, the general election polls. I mean, the, the, I, 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 and I, I continue to brag about this, and I'll brag about it forever. I, uh, I was one of the few people that predicted a Trump win. I had Trump with uh, 306 electoral votes, and it was no, there was no scientific poll taking on my part. I was just using my eyes. I was watching a Clinton rally with 38 people and a Trump rally with 38,000 people. I was seeing that the, the, you know, the people that go to those rallies are truly politically active people. And you could see the apathy on the left and the energy on the right. And and the fact of the matter is this very same thing. I'm insulted that the left thinks we're that stupid. I want to go back to something you said, though, because this is very – this is one of those things where I look at – and I'm somebody who's been in this situation. If I was a Clinton and I read your book 
and your book was not true, I would sue your ass off. Because yeah. all of the stuff that you put in that book was defamation, uh, the def- textbook definition of defamation and slander and libel and all the things you can think of. You basically mapped out factual factual things that make them criminals, things that, that should have been acted right. on by our DOJ, which we now know they were complicit with the Clintons. But the fact of the matter is if, if we acknowledge facts, and like you just said – Let's have the conversation after acknowledging the facts. The problem is, if you acknowledge the facts, there is no conversation. If you right. acknowledge the facts, that, that and that's exactly right, Peter. If you acknowledge the facts in your book, there's no conversation. We're headed to trial because these people are criminals of epic proportions. And it's insulting to me. It really is insulting to me to hear the left continue to, to hear Elizabeth Warren say, you know, I feel sorry for Molly's family, but let's talk about where the real problem is. I mean, this right. is a, a, a th- that is a woman who is held up as a, a standard bearer for the left. That's her her, her complete comp, uh, you know self awareness agenda or, or, or p- portfolio is wrapped up in that comment. And that, that, I'll tell you what, Peter, that, that where I, I I have hope is uh, um, six to twenty one. Six percent of uh, the minority vote went for President Trump at the election. It is now supposedly north of twenty some percent. I've been led to believe that the minute the black vote, the minority vote moves past 15 percent conservative, we will never, ever have another Democratic president. That is uh, one of the things I'm keeping my fingers crossed for, because if that's true, and, and it's what you said, Peter, the, the, the middle class, the people in the middle who haven't made up their minds, their lives are better than they were 18 months ago. No one, you, you can argue it all you want. You can say it's because Ocasio-Cortez, they have multiple jobs, or Elizabeth Warren, because they have four jobs. You can say all those things you want, but the fact of the matter is these people are living in a better, uh, living a better quality of life, and you, no matter what the news tells them, it, they, they, they know what their paycheck looks like at the end of every two weeks. You're exactly right, and look, I think one of the interesting uh, myths that's per- been perpetuated out there, particularly among those on the left that embrace identity politics, is the idea that minority voters are different than other voters, uh, that minority, minority voters aren't interested uh, in what their socioeconomic situation is, that they're not as interested or concerned about you know, their jobs or their, or their uh, pocketbook uh, improving. I think voters are voters. I don't think it matters what uh, – what color uh, you happen to be. And the bottom line is, with the economy booming, but, but this is very, very important, the economy is booming in a way, it's not just a Wall Street boom, which we've had in the past, where there's a lot of money being made on Wall Street, there's a lot of money being made in the investor class. You've got people in Midwestern towns uh, that are have opportunities to work overtime, that are seeing their wages rise, there are factories that are reopening. This is a economic boom that that's very deep um, that affects everybody the unemployment rate is down food stamp consumption is way down the point is that this is sort of one of those tides that is lifting all boats um, and that is very different than the sort of economic booms that we've had in the past sometimes which have been more uh, you know directed or, or, or primarily have been about the investor class making more money on Wall Street and that I think makes it a, a, a very very intriguing question of how committed are you know certain communities that have been traditionally democratic voters uh, to 90 95% when you have a situation where your uh, economic life has increased and improved substantially under this president, is that going to translate into more votes? And I think it is. I think that that voters are voters, uh, and they are going to respond to what they see as government policies and actions that have tangibly improved their lives. If I'm a father of four, and I'm coming home with more paycheck money every two weeks, and I see my 401k is growing, I don't care what else is happening. I understand what the government's doing is helping my family. There are more jobs than there are people for those jobs right now in this country, which is a mind-numbing thing to think about when you think about where we were 18 months ago. But the, the thing that I guess I could sum up, my my if you want to sum up what the left thinks about minority voters, I think it's all summed up in the fact that they believe uh, voter ID laws are racist. What they're saying is that a minority voter is too stupid to apply for a government ID or, or incapable of applying for a government ID. And that, to me, sums up what the left thinks of the minority voter and, I think, thinks of the redneck hillbilly white supremacist 
person that is apparently what the entire conservative party is made up of. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Kurt, that's a great point. Um, I've got a colleague here at GAI, Eric Eggers, who I think has been on the, the, the show with you, uh, who wrote a book called Fraud on Voter Fraud. And one of the things that, that, that the book does is explode the myth, you know, the myth that they create that if you require photo ID or if you have um, requirements to, to demonstrate when you vote who you actually are, that it's going to hurt minority turnout. Um, and there's no evidence for it. You've had all these states that have done it, Georgia, uh, Ohio, numerous other states, uh, and minority voter turnout is up. So the notion that somehow, you know, as you're saying, that minority communities can't have IDs and aren't capable of doing this is, first of all, incredibly insulting. Uh, but second of all, there's zero evidence that it's actually true, that it has any effect on, on minority voter turnout. And so it's one of those many myths that is perpetuated and pushed. Um, and uh, I think the, the important thing is that we have these alternative voices out there that allow people to get the facts out and draw their own conclusions. And I'm very confident that if you have fact-based conversations on these issues, most people are going to come down on a common sense position uh, and recognize that a lot of these claims of the left are just myths that are designed to perpetuate and expand their political power, uh, oftentimes at the expense of ordinary people. Well, if you want to talk about voter ID laws, uh, Peter, Molly Tibbetts' murderer uh, had multiple fake government-issued IDs. Uh, that's yep. how he stayed in the country. So uh, the, the thought that it's impossible for them to get IDs is embarrassing, insulting, and all the other things. Peter, never enough time, but gosh, I appreciate you coming on. Love to have you back, buddy. I'd love to do it. Thanks, Kurt. Appreciate right. it. Breitbart News Tonight with Joel Pollack and Rebecca Menasor. The real thing that the left is angry about is they're like, how could you allow these Russian memes? Somebody saw a meme and then they decided they had to vote for Trump. Or it must have been fake news. And by fake news, they mean conservative websites. Come on. But this is what the left thinks. Fake news. And by fake news, what they mean is shut down Breitbart. Breitbart News Tonight. Weeknights, starting at 9 p.m. East on Sirius X. XM Patriot 125. We want to hear from you. Tweet the show at Garrick38. Once again, here's Kurt Schilling. Joining me now is someone who's kind of been uh, on the uh, uh, at the tip of the spear on the on the Hollywood side of things. Not just the Hollywood side of things, but another topic we're going to talk about. Um, he is Breitbart's John Nolte. Hey, John, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, Kurt. Thanks for having me on. Good to talk to you. Uh, I played a soundbite to kick off the show, and, and I, I'm curious to get your reaction. Elizabeth Warren was on CNN last night, and she basically said, you know, yeah, I feel really bad for Molly Tibbetts' family, but I think we should really focus on where the real problem is. And, and I, I, thought, I, I stopped to think for a second. First of all, no, she didn't actually say that, and then I listened to it again, and she did. Uh, the fact of the matter was, uh, her belief is that uh, the separation of mothers and children at the border uh, is a far bigger issue than uh, a young lady being murdered by a person who, that, um, well, it was a murder that could have been prevented. And I, I don't know if you heard the soundbite, but I'm wondering what your thoughts are. It, yeah, I heard the soundbite. I mean, Elizabeth Warren is a monster. It's, this is, there, not only did Barack Obama and George W. Bush separate children from adults at the border and did so for very good reason, including their safety, including taking away the incentive to drag these poor children through a hundred miles of desert where many of them are sexually assaulted on the way. But they don't care about that. It's all about the politics. And the law is the law. That's one thing. These people, these illegal aliens are not supposed to be in our country. And the issue with Ms. Tibbetts is that the government, the American government, let her down because he was allowed in this country for four to seven years. He, he was able to get across the border. There are reports he lived in a sanctuary city for a while. And the Democrats are totally, this woman never should have died. Right. She, is a, she was an American citizen. She followed the rules. She was out jogging in Iowa, for God's sakes. And this, this monster came along 
and who never should have been in the country. And he is in the country because this government failed. And Elizabeth Warren is such a political monster that she can't even acknowledge that. She wants to go back to the narrative. And of course, the media is going to help her with the narrative. But I think, I think that at this moment, Elizabeth Warren will never be president. I think what yeah. she said is so serious. And Donald Trump will be able to so easily exploit this that she is done. And, and this is on top of her pretending to be an Indian so she could get good jobs right. at Harvard. I, I just I think she killed her. I think she killed her political aspirations yesterday. And I don't say that I, lightly. It, Those aren't things right. I say lightly. No, I, I'm with you. I, I, you know, this was I was Kate Steinle. Uh, Kate Steinle. Yes. Mullet, there's there's another story today on Breitbart about another murder that uh, where an illegal is, is I, I would love to see our government be made accountable for these murders. Uh, I, I think it would, uh, you know, much like uh, uh, a lot of the other, the real world where you have to take accountability, I would love to see accountability put on these people because I think the law- And our, pri our government's prepared. primary job is not to give us health care. It's not right. to, it's not to uh, uh, do, do, give, give cowboy poets money. Our government's primary constitutional and moral responsibility is to keep our, us safe. And because the left and the media want to flood this country with illegals because they see them as potential Democrat voters and because they are able to use the race card when those of us want people who are in this country illegally deported, and because the Republican establishment sees them as cheap labor for their pals and big business, these monsters are allowed in. This woman never should have died, and that blame is totally on our government. The word you use is going to be a great segue for us. You said monster, um, and that's exactly what this man is. But I would argue that we're in the midst of one of the biggest stories in our country's history, in the world's history in, in many ways, um, and it's being buried. And, and those are the monsters of the Catholic Church. And uh, there is a... Uh, um, uh, there's a there's a story out and multiple stories out uh, bombshell revelations uh, out of Pennsylvania. Some and I, I the numbers make me want to just puke. Three hundred plus members of the church. These are these are priests. These are bishops. These are cardinals. Uh, abused upwards of oh, well over a thousand children over the course of seventy years. The, the, I bet you those numbers are just the tip of the iceberg, which makes me even sicker. But the fact of the matter is, why? And maybe you can answer this for me, John. Why are we talking about this as a scandal and not a crime? Why aren't these men being put in front of uh, criminal courts and being held uh, accountable for the child? Of, because, I mean, they've ruined, by association, tens of thousands of lives. And and they're almost – you had a story about a, a Mex, uh, Cardinal Sergio Obeso Rivera, who he's offended that people are accusing the church. I, I, it's just mind boggling to me. The reason that this is not a criminal matter is because we learned something about how the establishment in both parties has governed this country locally and nationally over, over the last few generations. Mr. Manafort is going to prison over not paying his taxes in 2005. Right. 13 years ago. There is I'm not I'm not defending him. You should pay your taxes. Right. right. But there right. is no right. statute of limitations on not paying your taxes. But if you rape a kid, there's a statute of limitations. And now it's different in each state, three to seven years. But the reason these kitty rapists are not in front of a court is because one of the primary goals of the church was to and I'm saying this as a Catholic. It was to run out the statute of limitations. So in America, if you rape a kid after three, five, seven years, boy, you're in the clear. It, you can you can you can write about how you raped that kid. You can go on TV and confess it. Nobody can do anything to you. But if you don't pay your taxes after 12 years, they're going to come and get you. And that's how upside down this country is. I mean, that, that's one of those things that when you say it out loud, it's just impossible to believe. There's a statute of limitations on paying your taxes, which is fine. That's a crime. I get it. Um, uh, tax evasion is a crime. But there is there is no statute of limitations on tax evasion, and there is on the rape of a child. Think about that. I mean, that, that shows you to me how dark and how twisted 
uh, we've gotten and we've become, not just as a country, but as a species. Um, and, and it's and all I, about I, who has the power, right? Right. It's all about who has the power. These victims have no power. These victims of these of these priests, they have no power. So the laws remain in place yeah. to protect the powerful. And the powerful, that's the Catholic Church. Right. The powerful is the federal government. They they want your money, baby. And if you don't, they can come after you. They're going to put you in jail 12 years later for a crime you committed in 2005. And so there's no statute of limitations on that. It's all about who has the power. And it is disgraceful and it's un-American. That's actually another great word to, to, to pivot off of, the power. What we're seeing out of Hollywood is what happens when uh, demented, sick, twisted people have power. We are we were freaking out, not we, but the left was freaking out over the fact that that Trump called Omarosa a dog, which she is. Uh, he's called many, many men in his life dogs, which that's fine. But when the uh, the people in Hollywood use the c word to talk about President Trump's daughter, nothing. Oh, that's okay. That's kind of what she is. It's it. He deserves it. I mean, the the double standard. It's not even a double standard anymore. It's just two different worlds that 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 they live in. And and the fact of the matter is that we saw that kind of play out. I I, I tell you, I was so excited to see Kevin Spacey's movie debut to one hundred twenty six dollar opening day. Uh, it, which I thought was one of the funniest things I've ever read, and karma in, in spades, in, in one word. But farther than that, now, I, 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 as I've read it today on, on Breitbart.com, Kevin Spacey is now being investigated for another sexual assault. This one in 2016, this guy was at one time one of the most powerful men in Hollywood, much like Harvey Weinstein. Um, this almost feels like the steroid crisis in baseball. Everybody that was anybody was doing it. And, and and it feels like – and this is one of the places that the left gets its moral compass from is Hollywood. The Lena Dunhams and the Rosie O'Donnells and the Chelsea Handlers and the Madonnas, they're out there talking about these things, and they're grabbing headlines. And these are some of the most revoltingly reviled human beings on the planet. Yeah, you have, you have people that engage in disgusting personal conduct or cover up. And, and, and it's not just Hollywood. Look at all the names in the in the elite media. Charlie Rose, Matt Lauer, Mark Halperin, Glenn Thrush. These are these were top people in the elite media. And you have in these and these are two left wing institutions. And I don't want to I don't want to ignore the fact that Fox News had some problems, but it's a drop oh, yeah. in the bucket compared to what we're seeing elsewhere. And the. The cover up. So you have people that engage in the most disgusting conduct imaginable. You have the cover up, people covering that up all around them. And these are the people that want to lecture us, that want to tell right. us our values are wrong, our morals are wrong, that we're the hypocrites. And I'm 52 years old. I've had cable TV my whole life. And I am shocked at the way people behave. I had no idea that the human condition be, could become so twisted. Yep, I'm with that, you. That people would do things that that are just unimaginable to me. That I had no idea anyone would even consider doing outside of a serial killer. And I got to tell you, one of the things you just mentioned that you know there, and I say this a lot of times. You know, the left would have everyone believe that America is at fault for slavery. No, it's not America. Uh, or segregation. It wasn't America. It was the left. It was the Democratic Party. The the right has sexual deviance, and the and the right has their sexual assault cases, but those people generally tend to disappear. Uh, we we throw them out. They they aren't part of who and what we are. We don't you know. It's like trying to associate the KKK with the right. There's nothing right about the KKK. That that's not who the the KKK is a left leaning socialist fascist uh, group uh, uh, if there ever was one. But the fact of the matter is, we kick our we kick our bad people out. The left ends up voting their people into office. Uh, the, these people don't just, they don't get kicked out. They rise in positions of power and are some of the most influential people. John Podesta. I mean, that man is a mover. It's still to this day, there's no doubt in my mind that he is a very big person behind the scenes. These are some of the most repulsive human beings in the world. They're not getting put in jail. They're giving more power. Well, look at Keith Ellison. Keith Ellison right, is being right, accused exactly. by two women of sexual, of, of uh, battery. And he just won the, uh, uh, the, the the nomination to be the attorney general of Minnesota. And you know he wants to be the attorney general of Minnesota because he's worried Trump might take that state in 2020. 
and he's being completely protected. Meanwhile, Paris Denard, a black conservative uh, and Trump supporter who appears and who is hired, was just fired by CNN because of allegations going back to 2014. Yep. So a black Trump supporter over allegations, two allegations in 2014, he's done. He's a race. Keith Ellison, who, 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 who is not only facing two accusations on the record, but has unbelievable ties to uh, uh, Louis, Louis Farrakhan, yeah. uh, he's completely protected. And we see this over and over and over again. And the I'll problem is that the left – vastly outnumbers us with these hideous yep. monster men. And now they're done. They're not going to lose anymore. Leslie Moonves still has a job on the record witness still has a job. So they're done taking their own art, but a black guy, a black conservative who dares think for himself loses his job at CNN. AZ Argento. I mean, is there a better example? Uh, that the, one of the, one of the motivators and founders of the me too movement, uh, <laughs> Is is actually can uh, she's she's being uh, accused of the very thing she professes to be fighting against. It's just it, it plays over every day. Antifa is a group of fascists trying to act like they don't like fascism. I, I it, we could go on. Now. John, it's always a pleasure, buddy. Thank you so much for joining me again. Yep, my pleasure. Anytime, Kurt. Thank All right. you. As usual, there's always a uh, a litany of of potential candidates on the losing end of this thing, which is a testament to kind of uh, where we are as a species right now. But uh, I'm going to give it kind of a hands down to Elizabeth Warren today. She had the ger the I don't even know what you want to call it, the chutzpah, the nerve, whatever. She had the nerve to sit up yesterday and say that uh, the parents of Molly Tibbetts, while she felt bad for them, they actually needed to be focusing on where the real problems were, which are our immigration laws. And she did it with a straight face, which to me is even more I don't want to say it's more amazing because she is as repulsive a human being as they come. And I, she's everything in my mind, everything that uh, we hate about politics. She's everything that we can't stand about politics. My winner is uh, is someone the liberals hate as well, Ann Coulter. She's on a new uh, speaking tour because of her new book. And she mentioned something that I think is a potential conversation. And I, I'm wondering if it shouldn't be more of a conversation, and that is invoking the First Amendment to protections uh, around social media companies. Uh, you know, I'm a capitalist, so I have a very tough uh, time talking about intervening. But I, but I got to tell you, it's I'm I'm very concerned as we move to the midterms, and you watch the amount of power and influence social media has on people, and you don't wonder if there isn't something twisted and wrong about. Uh, them being able to do the things they're doing. Uh, but Anne is out there, as she usually does. She's uh, she's making arguments and she's backing her arguments up and her points up with with facts and data and relevant conversation. So anyway, uh, again, hey guys, great day. I, I thank, thanks again to Peter Schweitzer and John Nolte. I hope you guys enjoyed those interviews. I was uh, I thought that both of them were, were as usual incredibly informative. And yes, you're you're not hearing things, Elizabeth Warren just said that uh and, and it happened so god bless you guys thanks for tuning in we'll catch up with you guys tomorrow morning to close out the week have a great day guys god bless sunny's corner with sunny johnson everything in hip-hop is not bad kanye agreed with us so let's love him today until he raps tomorrow and you turn your back because if you jump off when the fun of the moment is over then you are, in fact, making Kanye the token he is accused of being. So please, don't do that. Don't go there. Sunny's Corner with Sunny Johnson. Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. East on Sirius XM Patriot 125.